Author and activist Larry Kramer, who helped found Gay Men's Health Crisis and ACT UP, sits down with entertainer and wig stock organizer Lady Bunny. With Bunny's humor and Larry's anger, they speak their minds about gays in the White House, the state of activism today, and gay history. It is my pleasure to interview legendary AIDS activist, playwright Larry Kramer, who founded ACT UP, GMHC and came out with the tragedy of today's gays when George Bush was elected. This is supposed to be an honor of Stonewall. And have we made any progress? Of course we've made progress. Have we not made any progress? Of course we haven't made any progress. But certain things we've lost. We used to have a lot more fun and we used to be able to make love without fear of death. So that's, those are both very heavy things and they're interrelated. So I'm sure this has had a great psychic effect on the population. How could it not? What it hasn't been able to do somehow is to help take it to the next level, you know, to take that and work with it and overcome it. A huge number of gay people do not self-identify first and foremost as gay. Until we can self-identify every one of us first and foremost as gay before anything else, we're not going to be able to put a population out there that's meaningful. I consider myself gay first before I'm a gay, before I'm a gay man or a gay Jew or, or, or a gay writer or a gay activist, I am gay. And that dictates every way, everything I do, how I look at things, how I react, how I write. The advocate has an article about all the new people who have been, that, that Obama has appointed who are gay, who are working in the White House. And it scared me because they're all saying things like, we're all in this together, blah, blah, meaning straights and gays. We're all in, that's the new, that's the new philosophy. We're all going to work together in this. And, and I just, I, I just, I just, almost had a, a fit. We're not all in this together. We are not all in this together. They are not with us. We have to go and we have to fight for us. I don't want you being in the White House not fighting for us first and foremost, you gays and lesbians who are on Obama's staff. Well, I mean, he's, he's obviously an improvement, but were you <laughs> glad to see um, the large turnout for Prop 8 uh, protests? I mean, one of your points in the tragedy of today's gays is that today's gays are not involved in activism. It was so little, too little, too late, and, uh, and it was very unfocused. The people came out, but they didn't know what to do when they came out. Uh, once again, we're leaderless. Once again, we're unfocused. Once again, we're not angry enough. Um, anger is what, photo is what makes activism work, and I don't see any anger now or fear. The triumph that we had with ACT UP getting all the drugs has been dissipated because ACT UP self-destructed and everybody went back out and as if AIDS had never happened. So that, that's that been very hard for me to accept that people have returned to what we were doing before. And I don't see the spirit that ACT UP engendered mm -hmm. carried on. I mean, that woman in, in, in Seattle had done a wonderful job getting things going, but it's it's just, it's kindergarten stuff compared with what we need. Did we deserve to lose? We certainly didn't fight a good fight. Why do you think that, that younger people have lost the taste for activism? I go around to schools and colleges a lot, and I talk to a lot of kids, and they know they're passive. They know it. I don't know what that means when you know you're passive and still that stay. That means you're a bottom. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean um, pa uh, politically you know, they're, passive. They're, they're, they're docile. So we, the people, have got to start the fight again. Ooh. You know, I say at uh, gay pride rallies that are often on Sundays around the country, it's great that we come out and we have a party and we say we're not ashamed to be gay and we celebrate the different types of gay people in the community, lesbian, whatever. Population. Yeah, population, sorry. <laughs> and, um, and I say, but we do this, we come out one Sunday per year. Our enemies come out 
every Sunday exactly. per year Make in a church. church. 52 to 1 are the odds. How can we win? We've got to get organized and we've got to meet. But in order to do that, to do that we've got to care. And I just don't see that, that younger people care. Forget younger people, any gay people. I don't see any gay people anywhere caring to the extent they should care that they need to care for us to have any kind of power. Do you think that it's not that it's also straight people who just don't care? The you know George no, Bush took away right. the writ of habeas corpus, and which you know has what predated the Magna Carta. I mean, not not even the Constitution. And I just think that that just floats by us because we're so concerned with Jennifer Aniston's latest hairstyle, or um, you know. You don't move in a very butch crowd, do you? <laughs> Larry. <laughs> imagine what you mean by that ridiculous statement. Uh, well, I mean, you I know. Mean, I, my, my people don't think about Jennifer Aniston or whoever my people are. They don't? No. But even our newscasters, I mean, news, um, is, uh, you know, trying to get people to call in and text in and uh, make YouTube videos so that they can get involved uh, and and be stars in some way. I mean, I think it's a national obsession, and it's an, it, it's a selfishness. It, it has nothing to do with furthering the the the, the needs of a com population. Sorry. <laughs> I put my blood into the tragedy of today's case. That little book. And uh, it's still out there, and I tell everybody, read it, and if it doesn't scare you, do something about it. But well, it 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 scared me. It thrilled me. I mean, it it it, it shot an arrow straight into my heart, and uh, you know, kind of lit a fire of activism in me. I have to admit that back in the days of ACT UP. It was so popular that it kind of became notorious as a cruising ground, and I felt like I might not measure, might not be macho enough to make the cut at the meetings. How do you think I the felt? Truth be told. But um, anyway, you are busy working on a book. Oh please, it's four thousand pages. I just printed it out. The first draft I just printed out. Wow. I've discovered. So many things, you know, about Abraham Lincoln and George Washington and Andrew Jackson and Lewis of Lewis and Clark and de Tocqueville. We got a lot of gay brothers out there. Wow. We do. That's another thing that bugs me totally is that gay history is not taught anywhere. <clears throat> Gender studies is taught. Gender studies is not gay history. Gender studies? Yes, darling. What is that? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Well, tell that to the Yale faculty. <laughs> Gender studies is why you no, I'm, no. why you wearing a wig or I do, you know my parents ask that yeah they a go lot in, they go in <laughs> they go into the history of why people wear wigs or something but they don't go into you know the history of George Washington being gay. Well, honey, this country, this great country, was founded by men wearing wigs, and I think that it's time to take the nation back. <laughs> we have a history and we have to know it. So maybe let Stonewall be symbolic of that. Somewhere there got to be a few diamonds in the rough, like you and me. We came out of that, you know. I went to discos all the time too, and we came out of it. So let's hope that there are others that can come out of it too. Where are you? Come on! Come out! Come out wherever you are! <laughs>